So we will keep it not only on the African continent, but in the Horn of Africa, Nile Basin area. Uh, a lot going on with Ethiopia, Somalia, the region of Somaliland that has a lot of implications for the Horn more broadly, Djibouti, Eritrea, other countries. Nonetheless, to get into at least some of that, we are very, very honored to be joined here on the show by Ilya Samari, who's an Eritrean-American journalist, geopolitical analyst, and a founding member of the Peace Building Center for the Horn of Africa, based in Asmara. Ilyas, as always, thanks so much for being with us. Well, uh, Rania and Eugene, as always, I'm happy to join you on Freedom Side. Um, belated uh, Happy New Year. I wish it was under better circumstances, but the struggle goes on, I guess. Indeed, indeed. Well, Happy New Year to you as well, sir. And I guess let me start here. People probably in the U.S. have maybe seen a few headlines. There's a lot of tension between Ethiopia and Somalia now uh, because of a deal signed between the government of Ethiopia and the regional government of Somali land to access a port. So I think for the average person who doesn't know much about the, the area, they might assume, why is this so controversial? Uh, they're signing a deal in a port. So maybe let's just start there. Uh, you know, why has this sort of kicked over a hornet's nest? Well, I'll try to be uh, as brief as possible explaining a very complex situation. Uh, I'm glad you brought uh, Brother Musa from Sudan uh, because I'm, I'm going to make making some linkages, there are essential linkages, even linkages further on with the genocidal war that's going on in Gaza and the, the Ansarullah, uh, you know, fight uh, in, uh, in the Red Sea, Gulf of Aden. Uh, briefly, the Somaliland uh, breakaway region is a result of uh, the, co the Cold War legacy. Uh, as the Cold War ended, Somalia also descended into disintegration, huh? Uh, why Somalia was kept uh, for over three decades in a state of disintegration has a largely to do with, uh, you know, the unipolar hegemony, the, the era of unipolar hegemony after the end of the Cold War, the, the U.S. imperialism entering where, the, you know, there is no force now uh, to counter us. We can do whatever we want. So uh, <coughs> recall, if you will, for example, uh, what uh, the former uh, commander uh, NATO commander Wesley Clark revealed at one time uh, in 2001, uh, two, I don't know, 2003, uh, Pentagon paper in which they had a plan to plunge the, the entire region, uh, Middle East, North Africa, Horn of Africa, into chaos. Uh, seven countries were targeted, uh, beginning with Iraq, then Syria, then Lebanon, then Libya, then Sudan, then Somalia, and finally uh, to Iran. The seven countries. Uh, that's exactly what unfolded. If you if you look at it, uh, why did he make that revelation? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes they are arrogant. They have this in-your-face attitude. This is what we're planning for you, and uh, we're going to do it. Type of uh, hubris of, of uh, you know polar hegemony, if you will, the craziness. But in the Middle East and in, the, in our region, Horn of Africa, that's what happened. Sudan has disintegrated into chaos as it was targeted. Somalia, the same uh, fate. Uh, the only country remaining is Iran. But to come back to the point, because I have to, you know, in the, in the brief moment that I'm given, I have to cover a lot of ground. Uh, to come back to the point, Somaliland was a breakaway. Uh, meantime, in the rest of Somalia, s uh, some... Uh, the struggle was going on to reconstitute and, uh, you know, to emerge from the ashes of state collapse. Huh? Meantime, the client regime of TPLF in Ethiopia, uh, U.S. client regime, was continuously prodded by its patron, the U.S., to unleash chaos in that part of the world, to, to divide Somalia along clan uh, lines, uh, to constantly, uh, you know, uh, prevent... Uh, the state from uh, from re-emerging from chaos. So the Somaliland breakaway regime in the north remained uh, in a state of limbo for 30 years. It never got uh, recognition, uh, international recognition, except maybe Taiwan, but Taiwan itself is in a state of limbo, uh, non-recognition. Uh, meanwhile, um, Somalia was beginning to re-emerge from the chaos, a central government in Mogadishu, uh, some sort of uh, semblance of uh, army, uh, navy. Uh, 
In Ethiopia, too, the TPLF regime was ousted. So this reformist government led by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ali came to power. Uh, there were a lot of hopes in the beginning uh, for a new beginning, but those hopes are dashed now. Uh, have to be brutally honest. Uh, call a spade a spade. Uh, Ethiopia is in a state of chaos, also disintegrating or, uh, into towards uh, state collapse. So this desperate prime minister there, Abiy Ahmed Ali, is maneuvering to you know to hoodwink the people and. Uh, divert their attention away from the urgent task in Ethiopia, the economic collapse, uh, the uh, ongoing wars in the Amhara region, genocidal wars, some, some would charge. Uh, so to divert that is bringing this port issue, the sea access issue, which never is really an issue. Uh, and so a memorandum of understanding was signed with the breakaway regime uh, of Somaliland, which has no authority, no legality, sovereignty, to give away uh, coastal, uh, you know, uh, access for naval base or what have you, according to the memorandum of, of understanding, uh, and this has created an uproar. It infringes on Somalia's sovereignty because the world, as far as the, the the rest of the world is concerned, the international community, the United Nations, African Union, only recognizes the central government in Mogadishu, the capital, as having the authority and sovereignty over uh, the entire uh, Somalia. So this was a breach, uh, a reckless uh, breach that provokes Somalia. Uh, it is an act of aggression and uh, they have condemned it. Now, uh, you have to bear in mind that this is only a memorandum of understanding, which is different from an agreement. A memorandum of understanding does not have legally binding uh, weight behind it. Huh? Uh, of course, it's much better than gentleman's agreement. For example, as the Soviet Union collapsed, it had Gorbachev insisted <laughs> to uh, James Baker and uh, you know the, the German Chancellor that the, the word they gave him that NATO would not expand an inch forward. Had he insisted on having that in writing, even a memorandum of understanding, that would have been much better. But uh, it was only verbal although memos of that meeting were kept. I'm, I'm diverting, of course, but what I'm saying is a memorandum of understanding does not have much weight uh, as, as an agreement or a treaty between two countries. And these are not two countries. One is, of course, Ethiopia is the seat of African Union, a recognized country, an old nation, uh, although it is disintegrating in, into chaos. Uh, the other is a breakaway region that wants recognition but doesn't have it has been trying that for 30 years and uh, hasn't achieved it. Uh, it was not capable to hold a referendum. Uh, it's not capable even to control what is called Somaliland now, because in a large part of Somaliland called Las Anod last year, there was a brutal civil war, and that part broke away from Hargesa. So this is the situation and the background, uh, uh, briefly, that, that is happening there. The, the major driving force for the two uh, desperados, uh, Abiy Ahmed Ali in Addis Ababa and Musa Bihi in Hargesa, is that both are in, in desperate situation. They want to salvage some kind of credibility or legitimacy within the, their population. And so they have brought this issue uh, for Musa Bihi. Is, he thinks he's getting international uh, recognition for, from a prestigious state, the center of African Union, Ethiopia, uh, which is highly questionable. Uh, as I said, the memorandum of understanding is, <laughs> we have not seen the, the full content of that memorandum of understanding. So, uh, and for uh, Abiy Ahmed Ali in Ethiopia, he's seeking uh, to divert attention from the desperate, dire situation that Ethiopia is in. It's, it's near economic collapse, uh, wars in all regions of the country. Uh, in particular, uh, this dangerous uh, ideology called Oromuma, uh, expansionist, uh, ethno-fascist uh, ideology, which is uh, that of the of the ruling group, uh, the Oromo Prosperity Party, that controls power. So, uh, I have uh, I hope I have given you uh, some uh, some introduction into this complex situation that is emerging, but it is dangerous and. Uh, the Somalia central government has condemned it uh, 
through its cabinet of ministers. It has issued a statement. Uh, the Arab League uh, has sided with Somalia and condemned uh, this infringement on Somalia's integ uh, territorial integrity and sovereignty. Uh, Egypt and others. Uh, the African Union has issued a somewhat tepid uh, statement calling for calm and the two sides to to discuss the, the situation. The regional organization, IGAD, has also issued another uh, tepid uh, statement. Uh, I call that the reliction of duty on the part of these two organizations because a dangerous situation is emerging. And unless uh, forceful, um, you know, uh, opposition uh, comes forth from all parts uh, of the Horn of Africa, uh, this will be uh, not not good for for uh, for that troubled region, as your previous guest has indicated. Sudan is in the situation it is now. To add to that, Ethiopia, uh, and if uh, if the region regional war happens in the Horn of Africa as a result of this reckless adventurism, that will have dire consequences for the region. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just sounds like God, there's just so much destabilization and, and so much potential for regional conflicts all across the African continent, the Middle East. It's quite a scary moment, but there's also so many historic shifts, shifts geopolitically. And I'm just curious in the sort of emerging world that we're world order that we're seeing um, play out. What are the forces that could help uh, de-escalate? this particular situation? Well, uh, yes, progressive forces, of course, must, first of all, understand the complex situation, uh, follow it closely, and uh, make the, the appropriate analysis, and make the linkages also. Uh, across uh, the sea, in the Gulf of Aden, uh, you know, the Ansarullah resistance uh, movement, which is a quasi-government that controls a huge part of Yemen now, uh, has, uh, by way of show of solidarity, uh, you know, stopped all ships that have any linkage with the Zionist uh, state of Israel, which is conducting the genocidal war on the, on the people of Gaza up north, uh, the, the northern part of the Red Sea. Uh, you can argue what you will, but that has created uh, an insecurity in the Red Sea. The Bab el Mandeb, which is the choke point, the, the very important choke point, uh, an entrance from the Gulf of Aden into the Red Sea. So all shipping has stopped. Uh, that's going to increase uh, the price of commodities for Europe, and um, it will have dire uh, ramifications uh, in terms of uh, increase of price of oil, increase in security in the Red Sea, the price of insurance for uh, ships have gone, uh, so they are taking the longer route through uh, the Cape of Good Hope, South Africa, to Europe. Uh, add to that now this uh, reckless adventurism uh, that is emerging uh, in, in Ethiopia and uh, Somaliland. That does not help matters. So uh, you can add to that as uh, the guest uh, was talking about Ukraine also. That war is still uh, not concluded. Uh, so uh, we need to make these linkages. We need to pay attention and we need to, you know, where things need to be condemned forcefully, we must uh, rise up to the occasion, call a spade a spade, and forcefully condemn such uh, reckless adventurism. To my surprise, the European Union has uh, reaffirmed Somalia's sovereignty uh, it's it's uh, support for Somalia sovereignty. Uh, so has the, the USA Department. I was surprised uh, with their statement la uh, yesterday that they have come. Uh, the spokesman of the State Department, uh, Matthew Miller, I think is his name, said that we recognize uh, Somalia's uh, sovereignty as per 1960 borders, which is the Somali land uh, breakaway dream of secession is not going to happen. The best way forward is that uh, this situation has to be resolved. Somalia has to reconstitute itself, stabilize itself, because uh, we cannot afford another uh, instability in the Horn of Africa, which can engulf the entire region into a wider regional war. 
already the prospects of a wider regional war in the Middle East are, uh, you know, are haunting us. Uh, the genocidal war in Gaza is continuing. This reckless Zionist uh, regime is continuing the war. Uh, bombardment in Lebanon. Uh, the Houthi and Sarullah movement in Yemen. Uh, you see what I mean, Rania? The, the danger is there. And this conflagration may even lead into a nuclear holocaust. So uh, we really uh, need to see the urgency of the emerging situation. And as we have to stop uh, conflagrations from, from happening all over. So we need to condemn uh, this move, this latest move by the irresponsible uh, leaders in Ethiopia and in Somaliland, uh, you know, and, and reverse the, the, the situation, reverse course. Ethiopia has to backtrack, backtrack from this. Somaliland does not have any sovereignty or, or the authority supposedly representing Somaliland in Hargesa, Musa Bihi, does not have any authority to, to grant uh, such kind of uh, lease, uh, whether it is uh, through a memorandum of understanding or uh, an agreement. As I said, it, this is still a memorandum of understanding. The full content of it, we have not seen yet. Uh, some are saying now, that the Ethiopian leader may have deceived the, the Somaliland leader into thinking that he is going to get international recognition. Uh, we have not uh, seen the full content of this memorandum of understanding, but uh, even the false hope of uh, recognition for Somaliland doesn't bode well for stability in the region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, very important points. And, you know, also notable that Somaliland has been shopping itself in terms of recognition to the U.S. and the U.K. for the past year as the best friend of the West if they were to recognize them. So a lot of different pieces and layers uh, to this. We'll have to leave it there right now, but I will note uh, or ask you, Ilias, tell folks where they can find you on YouTube because you actually have two very long in-depth discussions with uh, Dr. Mohammed Hassan on, on many of these issues I think are quite illuminating. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eugenius. Uh, I have a YouTube channel that is slowly growing, uh, Elias Amare, or at Elias Amare. Uh, I have a presence also on Twitter, at Elias Amare, and thank you for, uh, for the support. Uh, uh, the last interview we did, I have uploaded it, and people seem to like it. Uh, thank you for uh, granting me gracious permission to upload it on my channel. This is kind of solidarity co collaboration that is growing on be be between us, and I appreciate that very much, uh, Rania and Eugene, and I wish you all the best. No, we appreciate you. Thank you so much, as always, Elias. Thank you.